The Boko Haram terrorist group has confirmed the death of its leader, Abubakar Shekau, who reportedly died in a battle with the rival Islamic State West Africa Province faction last month. Hi, welcome to What's Happening. These are the top 10 stories now. At number 10, ahead of the Anambra state governorship election scheduled for November 6th, the vice chairman of the Senate Committee on Petroleum Upstream, Senator Ifai Uba, has emerged as the candidate of the Young Progressives Party. Speaking with journalists in Abuja at the party's national secretariat on Thursday, after he was declared by the YPP national leadership, Senator Uba dispelled the fears of Nigerians that the crisis in the southeast would disrupt the election. He also expressed optimism that his party would emerge victorious. At number 9, a pregnant 18-year-old girl, Kemishola Oguni, who was arrested by the police during the NSAS protest in Akure, Ondo State, has given birth in prison custody. Oguni, who has been in prison custody since October 24, 2020, reportedly gave birth to a baby boy on Wednesday, June 16, 2021. The security operatives who arrested her alongside three others accused them of being among those who burnt down the state secretariat of the All Progressives Congress. They were charged for conspiracy bordering on arson, riotous assembly, stealing and malicious damage. Ogunni's lawyer, Tope Tomekun, had written a letter to the Ondo State Chief Judge, Oluwatoi Akeredolu, claiming her client was innocent of the crime preferred against her. At number 8, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission has said that in the last 100 days, the Commission recovered $261 million, 6 billion naira, and 13,000 pounds illegally acquired by suspected fraudsters. The EFCC chairman, Abdul Rashid Bawa, who gave the details during the presidential media team ministerial briefing at Asurok on Thursday, added that the anti-graft agency also recovered 30 real estates, 32 automobiles, a farmland and other properties acquired by suspected fraudsters. Bauer explained that $100 million out of the $261 million was recovered from integrated logistics services. At number 7, the defense headquarters has said that the military has sustained onslaught against bandits, kidnappers and other criminal elements in the country by denying them freedom of action in the northwest and north central zones of the country. This was made known by the acting director of defense media operations, Brigadier General Bernard Onyeoku, at a press briefing on the operations of the military between June 3rd and June 16th in Abuja on Thursday. The defense spokesman said troops had continued to carry out ambushes, aggressive fighting patrols, air raids, sustained air intelligence surveillance recognizance patrols, as well as cordon and search operations. Onyoko added that the air component also conducted air raids on bandits' enclaves at Jibia area of Katsina State on June 6, killing scores of bandits. At number 6, the federal government has announced that 22 states and the Federal Capital Territory have registered for the National Livestock Transformation Plan aimed at establishing grazing reserves in the country. The Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development, Sabo Nanunu, disclosed this at the 44th National Council on Agriculture and Rural Development in Abuja on Thursday. He said seven of the states had mapped out 400,000 hectares of land for grazing reserves. At number 5, the Secretary General of the United Nations, Antonio Guterres, has called for the extension of debt relief for the world's more than 100 middle-income countries in order to expand their economies and exit the COVID-19 pandemic. Guterres said this to the General Assembly on Thursday at the UN headquarters in New York. He noted that middle-income countries account for more than half of the UN's 193 member states, underlining the need for financing to help them recover in the wake of the global crisis. According to him, middle-income countries should have their debts suspended till 2022 to cope with the social and economic impact of the coronavirus. At number 4, a federal high court in Abuja has upheld the power of the President of Nigeria to extend the tenure of a retiring Inspector General of Police pending the completion of the process for the appointment of a substantive successor. Justice Ahmed Mohamed pronounced the judgment on Friday in the suit filed by lawyer Maxwell Opara challenging President Muhammad Buhari's decision to extend the tenure of the immediate past Inspector General of Police, Mohamed Abubakar Adamu, for three months. The judge held that since the Constitution and the Police Act empowers the President to appoint an IGP by implication, he could extend the tenure of a retiring IGP before concluding the required consultation with the Police Council and other processes required for the appointment of a substantive replacement. 
At number three, five dead bodies have been recovered so far from the scene of the LPG tanker explosion on Mobolaji Anthony Way in the Maryland area of Lagos State, which occurred on Thursday night. The Lagos State Commissioner for Special Duties, Tayo Bangbose Martins, disclosed this to journalists on Friday at the scene of the incident. He said three victims died at the scene, while two others died at the hospital. Martin said, lives were lost, we had about 13 people rescued, but we understand that out of the 13 people, we've lost two of them, which means that we've only rescued 11. The spokesman for the Lagos State Emergency Management Agency, Musa Okumbo, also confirmed that five persons lost their lives in the explosion and that over 22 vehicles were burned in the inferno caused by the explosion. At number two, a federal high court sitting in Lagos State has discharged Senator Peter Nwoboshi of the 322 million naira money laundering charge filed against him by the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission. Ruling on Friday, Justice Chuku Jeku Aneke of the Ikoi Division of the Federal High Court held that the Commission could not prove the elements of the offences for which it charged the Senator. Ngoboshi is a chieftain of the People's Democratic Party representing Delta North in the Red Chamber. Also discharged are Ngoboshi's firms Golden Touch Construction Project Limited and Swimming Electrical Limited on the same ground. Finally, at number one, the Boko Haram terrorist group has confirmed the death of its leader, Abu Bakr Shekau, who reportedly died in a battlefield with the rival Islamic State West Africa Province faction last month. The insurgents confirmed Shekau's death in a video message from its presumed new commander. In the video shot in Arabic language, the top Boko Haram commander, Bakura Modu, also known as Sahaba, urged his faction's commanders to remain loyal despite the loss of their historic leader. The video made public by agents France Press was provided by a source close to Boko Haram. Recall that on Wednesday, May 19, 2021, reports emerged that Shekau died after sustaining serious injuries following ISWAP's invasion of the terror group's stronghold in Sambisa Forest. In the recent undated video, Bakura, guarded by scores of armed fighters in formation, addressed the camera, charging the terrorists to be steadfast and decapitate the enemy. Always remember to wear your mask, wash your hands and stay safe. That's all for today. See you next time on What's Happening.